third video dedicated to the masterpiece of symphonic music that is Mussorgsky Pictures at an exhibition takes on three more paintings, two of which are quite dark in mood. The one sitting in the middle, in contrast, is a lively depiction of a street market. Hello everyone, I'm Giamani Viglio and I welcome you to a new episode of Conducting Pills. If you're new here, this channel is all about classical music, score analysis and conducting tips. I want to thank all of my patrons for making this series possible. Now, on with Mussorgsky. No promenade follows the previous movement, and Mussorgsky starts right away with the depiction of two Jews, Goldenberg and Schmuele, most likely from two separate portraits. The structure depicts first Samuel Goldenberg, the opening andante up to rehearsal number 58, then Schmuele 58 to 60. Both themes overlap in a third section, 60 to 62, to which a coda is added. That is the use of the augmented second interval, typical of a lot of Jewish music, winking at the Phrygian scale. The ominous beginning in B-flat minor is played out in unison by the strings and the woodwinds minus the flutes and oboes, in which place an English horn is used to darken the color. The second portrait takes shape into a solo trumpet with mute, on an obsessive rhythm in triplets sustained by the chromatism of the oboe and the English horn. The two bars phrase is repeated and the chromatism passes onto the bassoons, helped by the clarinet. The exchange continues till the trumpets end the section with a small furlegium and connect directly to the next section. While they keep their obsessive rhythm, clarinets, bassoons, violas and basses take on a variation on Samuel Goldenberg's theme. The coda picks up on elements of the first portrait and ends with a common figure between the two, the triplet, in an imperative fortissimo in full orchestra. While the piano version maintains the promenade, Ravel's orchestral version excludes it, going right into what Stadovs describes as French women quarreling violently in the market. Limoges is a city in central France. Mussorgsky originally provided two paragraphs in French that described a marketplace discussion, great news, but subsequently crossed them out in the manuscript. Once again, the structure is an ABA with a coda, which leads directly into the following movement. Notice all the little details that Ravel puts in his orchestration to help recreate the atmosphere of a market. The triangle. The symbols, the snare drum, and once again the absence of the double basses help in the general lightness of the sound. It's a two bars phrase, repeated. One element, the quadruplet of 16 notes, is used in the following three bars, bouncing back and forth between instruments, bassoon, clarinet, flute, and transform into a descending scale. Part of the first phrase is repeated. And we approach the B section. The material remains the same, reworked in various manners. The change of meter to 3-4 helps create the sensation of perhaps something falling or something tumbling. The great fragmentation of the material across different sections of the orchestra increases the scatteredness of the scene, underlined by the street noises of the triangle and the snare drum. The episode is brief, and after a climactic couple of bars ending in a shrieking noise, a downward chromatic scale leads to a reprise of the A section. Coda is a slow section built on elements of the main theme. The repeated notes of the horns are quite challenging.
only four bars with the poco accelerando and we go straight into the next movement. This movement is split into two parts. The first one is an ominous largo built on blocks of chords, shifting dynamics from pianissimo to fortissimo. The asperities of the scene is well evident in the loud dissonant chords, for example, bar number four. Everything is obviously very dark. The orchestration makes use of the brass almost exclusively with some help from the bassoons and the double basses, and later the clarinets. There is no melody here, no theme, only the sensation of stillness with time frozen in darkness. A solo trumpet adds a touch of melancholy And this first part comes to an end. Notice the touch of darkness added by the temtem on the last chord, made even more terrifying by the horns in Boucher. The second part of this movement is less ominous, with the idea of perhaps finding some peace in the end. Commortuis in lingua mortua with the dead in a dead language, also became the title of this second part, which, unlike the first, does have a theme. The promenade, transformed in B minor, first heard in the oboe and the English horn, and then in the bassoons and the basses. Notice the descending chromatic line of the second violins and violas. After the episode is repeated, the music opens up, letting in a bit of light. The orchestration is typical of Ravel, making use of the harmonics in the double basses and cellos to color the sound in a very subtle way. The movement slowly comes to an end, finishing on a B major chord. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button right below this video and uh, ring the bell so you will get notified every time a new video comes out. For more in-depth analysis, conducting technique and conducting exercises, look on my website where you can find more than 100 videos and follow my Facebook group. And if you want to support this series, you're always welcome to do so on Patreon. All the links are in the description. Let me know in the comments what you think about this piece, if you have any suggestions for future videos. The next episode of this series will move on to the fourth and final part of this wonderful piece. In the meanwhile, please continue to enjoy music and be well. Ciao! Generally speaking, a pulsing point corresponds with the beat within the pattern. These points are connected by a stroke, straight or curved. Each stroke can also have other characteristics. Long.